Hi, this is Stephen Paul Taylor, and you are watching TDC Moncton. Hi folks, it's Nick and Mitch, and we've just it's come still, to see... I'm still burping up AMW, <laughs> holy crap. Oh. Having fun digesting that meal? Well, it'd be better to go down than up, yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, we've just come to see an anime movie which has the form of, uh, following commonality. You ready? Well, anyways, that's the movie we went to see, Smurfs in 3D, and it stars Hank Azaria as Gargamel, and the rest as themselves. The voice actors I didn't manage to catch. I do know that uh, I'm going to give you a full list of them, as well as the name of the actors, which uh, Neil Patrick Harris, for one, who played uh, the main yeah, uh, supporting... Yeah, uh, Katy Perry Kennedy. played Smurf, did the voice of Smurfette. Well, that much we remember. George Lopez played one of the other ones. Jeff Foxworthy played another one. Uh, Jonathan Winters played... Uh, With all the voice acting, Hank Azaria does, I'm surprised he didn't do any of the voices. Mm, yeah, but he's not... He, he does voice acting, but he doesn't do that much. Mm. But anyways... Uh, but he can do a fool. Yeah, that's true. But Come again. Of course, there's no Apu Smurf. Okay. Um, the the uh, movie itself, before we go into the positives, that there's a lot of positives to give. There's only one tiny negative. Actually, a few tiny ne negatives. Very tiny. In fact, very small. Um, three apples high. Yeah, three. no more than three apples high in, 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 in negatives. Uh, a lot of product placement in the movie. In Holy fact, crap, yes. out of all the movies that me and Mitch combined have seen, this has got to be the biggest product placement ever done in any movie. Yeah. Seriously. We're not kidding. Um, that is a big negative for me because I'd like it to be done without product placement. But then again, with product placement, they get revenue. And with revenue, they get to build. And However, then again, when people drink beer or they drink water or they drink soda, they don't drink generic no-name brand with the logo scraped off. That's true. Uh, with that, too, uh, the only downside to the fact that they may have made more money on their product placement for the movie, they didn't really invest in Azrael the cat as much as I would have liked it to be. Well, there was an actual cat that they used to, to film the scenes, but uh, they layered over top the yeah, cat's actual face, for, it, and they went too far. It just wasn't believable. No, it's not made to be believable. Well, they could have spent more time fine-tuning the effect. Yes. They didn't polish it off as well as we would have liked it. It wasn't at the point where this is the cat's body, this is the head. Ah, oh, they're not together. They're <laughs> apart. Oh, we don't care. We ran out of money two weeks ago. <laughs> no, it's not at that point. Well, that said, um, the, that, that's the only two negatives that we really have about the movie. Um, the positives are unbelievably... Uh, actually, they flattened us because we didn't expect to come out as entertained as we were. No, the we movie has a real storyline. It has no gimmicks to actually say, well, there's plot holes and it's not going to work. They actually made it work for once. Yeah, unlike uh, Cowboys and Aliens, which we expect... Actually, we expect Cowboys and Aliens to be a really good movie. Smurfs, we only wanted to go see because we grew up watching Smurfs. We were curious. But uh, Cowboys and Aliens had... So many freaking plot holes. This one had none. Yep. So pretty much what Mitch gave you as a as a description and, and as so an basically our weekend is reversed what we thought it was gonna be, movie wise. Yeah, it's a completely smurf weekend. Even though it's Monday. Yeah. But it's a uh, long weekend. Smurf tomorrow. Yeah, smurf work. Ugh. Anyways, um, the Hank Azaria does a very good Gargamel. In fact, the makeup they did on him made him look like Gargamel. The look that they gave him, the disheveled robe with patches on it. The comb over. The comb over. Uh, made him look like Gargamel. And he sounded as much as Gargamel as any current actor could sound. But Because the original voice actor is probably either dead, deceased, or unavailable. <laughs> he probably wasn't camera presentable to look slim as Gargamel is in the movie. <laughs> I guess imagine him. Yes, and we brought back the original voice actor to play Gargamel. It's, 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 it's just a skeleton with rags. <laughs> Animatronics kill me, again. Kill me, kill me. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but the movie is well worth <clears throat> the watch, and if you're going to go see it with your kids, even better because it's rated G. However, I think they should have rated it PG because some of the themes might be somewhat requiring parental guidance <laughs> yeah uh, so they, they're probably rated a g not to scare parents away from taking their kids to it 
but it, it probably reserves a, it deserves a PG-13. Yeah. Um, this is what you cross the Smurfs with with uh, the movie uh, The Visitors. If you've ever seen the English version of Les Voyageurs or Les Visiteurs, um, which is actually quite a fun movie. But this one was actually better than the rest that we've seen so far. So we can't complain. Um, stay until the end of the credits. There's a little bit of animation during the credits. Yeah, the, the, there's nothing no, major. There's no great thing at the end of closing credits. Oh yeah, I missed that. No, it's nothing like that, but th there's little animations that go up and down. Yep. Just throwing them in. And uh, this is actually more a Sony picture than it is a... Um, Cap Columbia TriStar. Columbia TriStar picture, for some odd reason. But Sony did do pretty much everything. In fact, they invested pretty much all the, the, the technology for the animation. So, from both of us, actually, this movie is getting two thumbs up. Yes, for me too. Yep. However, parents, I don't care if you're bored by the movie, do not pull out <laughs> your cell phone to text. I actually had to tell a woman to shut off her phone. How many times, Mitch? Uh, twice. She had to be up too. So I'm sorry. What, what, I'm sorry. What are you saying? I don't hear you. And meanwhile, she's holding the her iPhone to, uh, to us with a blank page of text, like a flashlight in her face. Yeah. And what did I say after that? Shut your fucking phone off. I have children here. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> shut it off. Yeah. Unfortunately, I really don't give a flying fuck of parents who well, the have part, their she... text phone on in a theater full of children. She's had it on for about four or five minutes. She was aiming it away from her family not to bother them. But we're two seats over. It's it's. I, I could I could I could read the dials on my watch by the light from her fucking t fucking fucking iPhone. Mitch is too polite when it comes to movie theaters. I mean, there's what I'd like to do. There's what, what I'm gonna do. Nothing. What I'd like to do is pitch her and her fucking phone across the theater and watch her splat and break on the very bad seats and laugh. Yeah. So, if perchance, Little Miss, you are actually listening to this, which I doubt because I don't think your culture goes as deep as YouTube, well... The car agrees. Yeah, exactly. So, Smurf off to you. Anyways, from both of us, have a nice one.